Greetings. Welcome to another Insight Project video. Welcome, welcome. At some point I have to figure out lighting because it, it's like Marlon Brando or whoever in Heart of Darkness. <laughs> um, Alright. So what I thought I'd do here is go through my reasoning for what I'll call next generation rotors and then also just actually design them on Tinkercad, the actual CAD files um, for people who want to want to come along. So I'll be sharing the final secret. The secret secret. <laughs> so I'm um, being facetious. However, I will say this, that I don't see this done with conventional electric motor design and you know I'm not an engineer I'm, I'm a physician damn it Jim and when I look at this I mean I'm like you know what do you what do you people have manure for reins I mean why don't you do this is this like some sort of gentleman's agreement like they have with NASCAR oh you can't do that the car would go too fast so you know I'm I'm feeling my oats here and, and uh, and a lot of times you do this and it's like three weeks later. Oh, that's why no one does. I wish I'd known that three weeks ago. <laughs> that happens plenty of times as well. However, I'm fairly confident that there's um, some good stuff that can be done with this. And I'll uh, first I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. And then... Um, you know, as we're going along there, also why I think um, there's some reason uh, to expect some efficiency gains with the motor set up in this fashion. Let's consider for a moment this animation of a brushed DC motor. Now this has some things in common with the pulse DC motor and a lot of things that are different. And I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer to note the similarities and differences. The thing I want to point out here is you see there's, it's, you know, let's say that's uh, north and now it's south and then that's, well, it doesn't animate very well there. That's south and then north. But every time that this pole of your electromagnet is lighting up, this pole towards the interior is lighting up with an opposite orientation. So every time this lights up red, that lights up blue. Now that's lighting up red while that's blue. But all of that is wasted because it's just going into the interior. And so how might you take advantage of that? So here's a second animation that looks a tiny bit more like our pulse motor because at least now the magnets are spinning on the inside and the electromagnets are the stator on the outside. The point I'm getting at is whenever you see, for instance, this one showing a red here, pushing this along, or a blue now, you're also getting the red on the other side, of course, because it's an electromagnet. It has two poles. So let's wait for it now. You have the blue doing work, the red's not doing anything. It's just going out into the air. And if you could find a way to make use of this side of the electromagnet, you would double the efficiency of your rotor with no cost to wire, no cost to energy. It would be no cost energy. So let's now, we'll go over to the coffee table and we'll talk about some ways that you might take advantage of this side of your electromagnet. So let's just look at this sort of setup that we had spinning in a, a previous, I think the, the last video. You have the magnets coming past north to south. You have your coil here that's pulsing at the appropriate time with the rectification and a, uh, not the rectification, the commutation and a Hall effect. So you have this pulsing out, say a north to a north and pushing that away and pulling the south in, and then it switches, now south. But at the same time, when this pushes out a north, this pushes out a south to the other end of the coil, right? It's an electromagnet. It's not a monopole. So whenever you're establishing a north here, 
you're also establishing a south here and vice versa. But you never do anything with it. And as we saw previously, you don't do anything with it conventionally either. So, I mean, you could think of like maybe trying to put another rotor out here, but it wouldn't be timed. Only this one is timed. So you'd have to hope that it synced up. One of the things that I had thought of previously was do a horseshoe, core, uh, horseshoe core. So boom around to here, then that'll be your north and you would drag the south out to there. And I think that would work fine. It would just... Uh, I mean, it's kind of involved to set it up, um, so I never did it. Another approach, and I saw when I uh, learned about Robert Adams' write-up on his pulse motor, was um, you could have, you know, a core here going to a separate second pickup coil and split that coil in two and then take the second half of the wire around there so you wouldn't have to wind the whole core around and you'd get the same effect of bringing this wasted energy into play to drive the rotor. But there's still another way to do this. A secret way. Alright, I'll shut up on that. But let's look at a different rotor. So here's a rotor that I 3D printed previously. And if we take a, a thing here, polarity indicator, they're going north, south, north, south, north, south. And so it'll work with our bipolar commutation circuit. Now, if you consider Fleming's right-hand rule, if this was sitting like that, it should spin the rotor. So this is, we'll just turn the power on to like 5 volts. This is not going to be like some sort of Stradivarius build or something. But let's just see if I can demonstrate it for you. So there's our Hall effect. And i got to do this one-handed here. Let's see what's happening. Oh, come on. It's it's hitting the wire. Come on, baby. Yeah, we're going to get five volts. Woo. So you see, um, Fleming's right-hand rule works fine here. And that's spinning away. So, now what you could think to do is extend the rotor up to here to where it fits with this and have another set of magnets if this one's north that one would be south and then you're getting both of these to come into play and you you doubled the torque the power the efficiency of your motor for no extra amp draw no extra wire for nothing it's just there you've just finally brought it into play by extending it and running the, the motor like this. Now let me see if I can show one more thing. Okay, I'm, I'm having trouble with the, getting the Hall effect position right. But see, now we have it set up axial flux style, AKA window motor, AKA zero force. And you still have the same, the same thing. So you could set it, set it up axial flux if you want it as well. So that's another thing that you can do with this setup. And, and you would bring both sides of the electromagnet to bear. Okay, um, let's just wrap this up here. And then in the next video, I'll mention the people who've done this previously. And we'll design some rotors on Tinkercad that would fit with this sort of reasoning. And even add in one variation, which... Um, I'm thinking about thanks to a comment on on the uh, you know on the YouTube channel that may even be an improvement. Um, I think it I think it would be, but we'll have to see. And then I also I want to see <laughs> with, with some lemon batteries. Like, could I take one or two lemon batteries and get a pulse rotor spinning at? 500 or a thousand or, or 1500 rpms and um, it's not out of the question so we'll we'll do some stuff with lemon batteries like measure the capacity and and spin um, spin some pulse motors but this is the I mean not not to be dramatic but th this actually is um, to my mind at least <laughs> 
this is um, this is the uh, more important stuff. Thanks, everyone, and stay healthy, please.